My days were consumed with prayers, studies, and the monotony of the church-owned estate. Boredom and loneliness had become constant companions, and I yearned for something more, something that would ignite a spark in my mundane existence. One day as I wandered through the halls of the seminary, it was a cold evening, and I overheard a seminarian discussing with a friend about an app called Tinder. It was a platform where people sought companionship and connection, often leading to romantic encounters. Although the idea seemed forbidden, and my curiosity overpowered my conscience. That night I downloaded the app onto my phone, eager to experience the thrill of a forbidden adventure. Little did I know that this decision would alter the course of my life in unimaginable ways. As I scrolled through the profiles, one caught my eye. A woman of incomparable beauty. Her name is Princess, a pseudonym that added an air of mystery to her persona. We matched, and our conversations began innocently enough, discussing our backgrounds, interests, and dreams. As our interactions deepened, I discovered that Princess was unlike anyone I had ever met. She is also new here, so we delved into profound discussions, questioning the very foundations of our beliefs and the reasoning behind our choices. Her intellect matched her captivating beauty, and my heart couldn't help but yearn for more. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months as our bond grew stronger. We became confidants, sharing our deepest fears and desires. Our conversations surpassed the boundaries of time and space, transcending the constraints of the seminary walls. As my feelings for Princess grow, a conflict within me began to brew. The love I had found in her arms challenged my devotion to the church and my oath to the priesthood. I grappled with the weight of my desires, torn between the sacred calling and the forbidden love that had consumed my heart. Princess, too, struggled with her battles. Her father betrothed her to an arrogant prince against her will. Our hearts yearned for each other now, longing for a love that knew no bounds. One fateful evening, as the moon cast an ethereal glow upon the seminary grounds, I noticed my heart beat faster. As I knelt before the altar, I prayed for guidance between my devotion to the church and the burgeoning love I felt for Princess. The flickering candlelight cast dancing shadows on the walls, mirroring the turmoil in my soul, the love I had found in Princess's arms. In the secrecy of that night, Princess proposed a daring idea. She suggested we meet in person, to break free from the confines of our digital connection. The mere thought of such an encounter sent waves of exhilaration and trepidation through my veins. I knew it was forbidden, but the allure was irresistible. I sneaked away from the chapel, my heart pounding with both guilt and excitement. We arranged to meet at a small secluded cafe on the outskirts of town. I knew that crossing the threshold of this clandestine relationship would forever alter the path I had chosen. I found myself standing outside the cafe, my heart pounding in my chest. I entered cautiously, scanning the room for the woman who had captivated my heart and mind. And there she was, seated at a corner table, her radiant smile illuminating the entire room. Princess was even more enchanting in person, her eyes gleaming with a mix of excitement and apprehension. We greeted each other with nervous laughter and embraced, the touch of her hand sending shivers down my spine. The cafe faded into the background as we embarked on an enchanting journey of discovery. With every word spoken, every shared moment, the chasm between duty and desire grew wider. Princess was a free spirit, unbound by the shackles of convention. She spoke of her dreams of exploring the world, experiencing life's wonders, and embracing the unknown. As I listened, a part of me longed to abandon my pious existence, to follow her into the vast expanse of possibilities. But the weight of my responsibilities and the expectations placed upon me kept me tethered to the life I knew. As the hours passed, our conversations evolved into confessions of love. We confessed our forbidden desires, acknowledging the undeniable connection that had blossomed between us. The world around us ceased to exist as we shared our first kiss, sealing our fate in that stolen moment of passion. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months once again. The meetings with Princess became regular. Our secret encounters are known only to the stars that witnessed our forbidden love. Our clandestine romance became the light that guided me through the darkness of my existence within the seminary. But secrets have a way of unraveling, and the universe has a cruel sense of timing. 
One fateful evening as I stood before the altar consumed by the weight of my guilt, a familiar voice echoed through the empty chapel. Father, it called, filled with both desperation and pain. I turned around and there she stood, princess, tears streaming down her face. The facade we had built to shield our love had crumbled, leaving behind nothing but broken hearts and shattered dreams. Princess, what are you doing here? I asked, my voice trembling with a mixture of fear and longing. She reached out to me, her hand shaking. Father, I'm pregnant, she whispered, her voice barely audible. The walls of the chapel closed in on me and the air grew heavy with the weight of our transgressions. Time stood still as I processed the magnitude of her revelation. My mind raced, desperately searching for a solution that would keep our love hidden, protect the reputation of the church and safeguard the future we had dreamed of. But deep down, I knew that there was no escaping the consequences of our actions. The truth had caught up to us, demanding its rightful place in the narrative of our lives. I took a step closer to Princess, my hand trembling as I reached out to touch her cheek. The tenderness in her eyes was matched by the anguish in her voice as she continued, I don't know what to do, Father. Our love, our child. It feels like everything is slipping away. I took a deep breath, the weight of responsibility settling heavily upon my shoulders. The life I had known, the path I had chosen, was irreversibly shattered. There was no turning back now. At that moment, I made a choice. Princess, we must face the truth, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil within. We cannot continue hiding. We must confront the consequences of our actions and find a way to navigate this difficult path together. As I spoke those words, I knew I was relinquishing the life I had once known, the life of a devoted priest bound by vows of chastity and obedience. I was prepared to face the judgment and consequences that awaited us, both within the church and in the eyes of society. But above all, I was determined to stand by Princess, to be a father to our child, and to forge a new path that honored our love and the life we had created. Together, we sought guidance from a trusted confidant, a wise and compassionate bishop who had counseled me during my years of study. With a heavy heart, I confessed our forbidden love and the impending arrival of our child. The bishop's expression shifted from surprise to concern, but his eyes reflected understanding rather than condemnation. Father Thomas, you face a difficult road ahead, he said, his voice filled with empathy. But I believe in the transformative power of love and forgiveness. Our faith teaches us that redemption is possible even in the face of mistakes and sins. It will not be easy, but I will support you in your journey of reconciliation. In the following days, the bishop helped us navigate the intricate web of church doctrine, legal obligations, and societal expectations. We met with the church hierarchy, where I tendered my resignation from the priesthood, accepting the consequences of my actions. The church, though disappointed, showed a willingness to offer support and forgiveness, recognizing the complexity of human emotions and the importance of compassion. In the wake of our decision, Princess and I faced a myriad of challenges. We encountered judgment from those who questioned our integrity, skepticism from friends and family, who struggled to understand our choices and the overwhelming responsibility of preparing for the arrival of our child. But we were not alone. True friends emerged, offering unwavering support and encouragement, reminding us that love and compassion can triumph over adversity. They stood by our side, helping us build a foundation of strength and resilience as we embarked on the uncharted territory of parenthood. As the months passed, Princess and I dedicated ourselves to preparing for the arrival of our child and nurturing the love that had blossomed in the face of adversity. We sought counseling, both individually and as a couple, to address the lingering guilt and self-doubt that threatened to erode our happiness. We worked tirelessly to establish a solid partnership, grounded in trust, open communication, and shared values. And finally, the day arrived when Princess gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. As I held our daughter in my arms for the first time, a profound sense of gratitude and awe washed over me. In her tiny face, I saw the reflection of our love, the love that had defied boundaries and shattered expectations. She was a symbol of hope, a testament to the power of embracing authenticity. The royal home was the first to visit us in celebration of our newborn baby.